Before we get into the latest episode of The Lulberts, I just want to remind everyone that the contest for the I Don't Know You, That's My Purse Gadsden flag and the free copy of Ben Stone's book and a whole bunch of other secret goodies, which I am not divulging, is still ongoing. Uh, it's really simple to, simple to enter. All you have to do is leave a very funny review on iTunes and or Stitcher. And Steve Miller Miller and I will judge the funniest comments and choose a winner. Um, get your entries in by August 15th. After that, we will schedule a recording episode with Steve Miller Miller in which we will go through the comments and pick a winner. Get in on it now. Worms. The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom. There's nothing there yet. And I am here with uh, <laughs> David Lu- Lukehart from ZGY. Uh, z- gov- zombies Government. I'm not doing this again. Z- zombies Government. <laughs> uh, what is the with me? Do- go- yeah. Why am I having the to do multiple takes? Zombies Government and you. Okay, yes. there we go. Zombies Government and you podcast, which is great. ZGY. Yeah. And... So yesterday we did a show with Jeremy, and because I don't really follow the news that much, like I didn't notice that there was a terrorist attack in London, and then like uh, one, uh, well, one person commented like, "Oh, you didn't talk about it." Um, he wasn't mad; he was kind of joking around about it. It's just that mm-hmm. I just wasn't paying attention to the news, and I don't care, and you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's a sad story, so I guess moment of silence. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, there's my moment of silence. It's sad. I'm, I'm not put, not insulting it or anything. I just. I just don't follow the news <laughs> unless it's like yeah, something I, I can make I fun of Trump you. or something. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't uh, I didn't know who Ariana Grande was or it even I, I just now Googled it to find out who she was. And apparently she's like, she's pretty cute. She's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. I guess she was yeah, on a Nickelodeon very, show. Very popular uh, pop singer. Yeah. Which I'm not into pop. I think that's like Jim Gordon's area. So <laughs> I'll leave that to him. <laughs> but. Yeah. You know, I do. I do have some kids, and they they listen to it. That's how I'm familiar. Oh, okay. With her. So, I knew the name, and uh, I, I probably couldn't place her face, but you know, I did. Know, I did know the name. Yeah. But yeah, she's definitely uh, easy on the eyes there. Yeah, and I was like, ninety three. Okay, she's legal. I can look and. <laughs> <laughs> you got. Hey, man, you got to check all the. You know, you got to check all the bases. I got. I got to do a lot of covered. research on this. A lot of research on this. <clears throat> Never know these days. Was she in uh, one of those? Uh, what is it? The um, the leaks, the porn leaks. What was it? <laughs> the fapping? I, I don't know. <clears throat> I hope doesn't, so. It doesn't ring a bell. Not that I, you know, not that I do <laughs> listen to that stuff or pay attention to that. <laughs> this is this is probably a little bit beyond the pale, considering the circumstances we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but oh kind well. of dovetailed. Yeah, kind of dovetailed into an interesting spot there. I love it. Yeah, terrorism sucks. That's for sure. It's blowback. Yeah. You know, well, it, eh, unfortunately, of, yeah. Let's just not also forget that there's a large portion of of this religion. Not not all. I know not all. Um, most of them are good, but there's there's, mm-hmm. there's just like an overwhelming kind of you know radicalization with with this, with this group, and you know like whatever. And it needs to be overcome, I guess. But I'm not the one to do it because I'm not Muslim and I'm not active in the community. But you know, I'm glad like right. people like um, Will Cooley and stuff are quick to call them out. Um, Absolutely, so that's good. Will Cooley's a cool guy, but yeah, I, I follow him on Facebook, man. He's uh, he's mm-hmm. legit. Does some good stuff. Yep. So sad that that happened, but yeah. Um, wh- wh- why were they like? I heard that they were like targeting her, like in particular, in even though she was like pro immigration or something. What was that all about? Because I heard like rumors about this. Did you know anything about this? Um, the one thing I saw was that uh, ISIS, of course, claimed responsibility, but you know, who's to know? They could just come out and say that. I don't yeah. know if there's an actual thing backing that up. Um, <clears throat> they, you know, they said it was basically we. They targeted a group of crusaders. So I don't. I don't know any particular reason why they would target her specifically. Because uh, as far as I know, in fact, I've seen a lot of uh, social media conservative, you know, conservatives or cultural justice warriors kind of up in arms about her being largely uh, pro-refugee or pro-immigration and even pro-Muslim. So, you know, 
I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get that connection. I think it was to me. It just looked like a target of opportunity. Yeah, you know, it was like here's a large um, group of people in a you know in a confined space, and it's you know, of course, it is a, a woman who's you know cavorting on stage and less than they would like her to wear, I guess. <laughs> Shall we say, you know, scantily clad. Yeah. Um, but why don't they so, go after someone? To me, like, that's what it was. Why don't they go after someone like Miley Cyrus, who's like, like the the you know the epitome of everything that oh, they yeah. stand against? The whole, yeah. Maybe she has better security, or I don't know. Probably. Like I said, maybe just. I'm was not that saying they of should. Opportunity. I'm no, not no. saying they should. <laughs> By the way, I'm not saying that they as, should. As much as I hate her music, I don't wish that you on know, her or her fans. You know. I, I when it comes so I can think pop music is terrible uh, you know across the board uh there's stuff that you know that slips out occasionally where I'm like oh that's kind of good and usually yeah. the stuff where it slips out that I say like oh this is actually tolerable usually comes from Cy- like Molly Cyrus uh, post you know her going like crazy slutty like all that stuff's kind of a little bit weird but like Wrecking Ball is probably like one of the be- <laughs> like one of the songs I could hear come on the radio and not be like Ugh, turn this off. It's like one of the few that I, that I can actually stomach listening to. You, you tear up a little? No, I don't know about all that. <laughs> right in the feels? No. <laughs> <laughs> the po- Weird Al's polka version of that was actually pretty good, though. Oh, um, that's great. But um, Everything also, he does is great. Yeah. She, she also did an album with uh, The Flaming Lips, and I know Anthony Fantano like ripped it apart, but then when I listened to it, I was like, this is not bad, but I see where like he has issue with it, where she's just trying to be yeah. edgy, like, ooh, I smoke pot. Like, look how edgy I am. It's like, um, that was what, like whatever. 1990, where that was supposed to be yeah. edgy. <laughs> and, get, on, get on my level, fam. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever. It's a pot, you know, pot's largely illegal now, so it's just, it doesn't have the same, uh, yeah. you know, it's not the devil weed of the 50s, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, get something else, you know, graduate up to crack or something. <laughs> Especially if you're hanging out with the, with the flaming lips. I think you should be on like, yeah. acid and mushrooms by then. Some kind of, <laughs> yeah, some kind of hallucinogen, you um, know? Uh, go full Frank Zappa or something, you know? The Beatles, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well you know what she uh, did do it she did like uh i think she was on like one or two songs of the no she was on two songs from the uh the flaming lips album they did they just did a, a cover album of um sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club <laughs> band and she sang uh lucy in the sky and day in the life which are like my two one of, probably my two favorite tracks off that album yeah and i was like holy shit i'm actually enjoying a miley cyrus song <laughs> kill me <laughs> i know but, yeah you're lo- looking around to make sure nobody sees yeah, you. No. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, she's she's got some talent. Obviously, not my cup mm-hmm. of tea, but yeah, not my cup um, of tea either. Yeah. But if if Let's... if you were to force me to listen to modern <laughs> pop, I th- I think the two that I would have to pick would be Gaga and Miley Cyrus. Even yeah, though I, I think would, they're I, insufferable I, as people. I used to be totally anti Gaga, but um. And I'm not like a huge fan, but I, no. I've actually come to kind of the knowledge that she has some freaking talent, and she can actually sing, man. Yep. You know, so. Yep, and it's some of the tolerable stuff. And I will and say, the, like, I'll get what is it? Party, party in the CIA, the the Weird Al cover she did of Party in the USA. I'll get that awesome. stuck in my head, and I'll be like <clears> humming <throat> it. And I wonder if like people at when I'm at work or whatever be like, is he humming like Miley Cyrus? <laughs> Technically, but no, <laughs> no, but no. <laughs> Technically, yeah. So yeah, but I was so. Anyways, I, before we started, I was uh, I would as soon as you hopped on, you were hearing me like laughing <laughs> because I was watching. Because yeah. uh, I found this show and it's called um, Hot Ones, and it's an interview show. And what what this guy does, like, there's like other series that they, that's on this channel but the the one that i only watch and I, I don't subscribe to it i just check up on it every once in a while and see if there's anyone new or interesting that i care about he'll have like a celebrity or someone come on and they'll they'll have like a, a an interview but while they're doing an interview they're they're eating hot wings <coughs> and every hot wing is with a different sauce so they'll start out with like sriracha tapatio tabasco whatever and then it starts moving up to like you know the habanero stuff, and 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 then by the end of it, they're eating like Blair's Megadeth <laughs> and like Jeez. ghost pepper sauces and stuff. Yeah, 
and it's great. So like by the time it's over, they're all like sweating and crying and tearing and blowing their nose and pounding milk and <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay. And and as as the interview goes along, they're asking more like pressing questions. <laughs> so by the time they're eating the hot sauce, they're like asking them questions that require a lot of like mental thought or something. <laughs> but they're just like And they're well, just dying. <gasps> Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> My stomach's bleeding. You should I stop can't doing think. this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching one with TJ Miller, who was like uh, Deadpool's friend in the movie Deadpool. He also was yeah, on Silicon dude, Valley. Man. Yeah, Silicon Valley. I've never seen that show, by the way. Everybody tells me it's great. I just haven't done it. Yeah, I, I, when I used to have uh, access to HBO, I wanted to watch it, but I never got around to it. Still, I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, there's like this, um, someone was telling me, and I mentioned this the last show with Jeremy, that they have like this thing called tor- 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 torrents, torrents, yes, and if you have a, a, a VPN, a v- a v- then you can you could go on there and watch them for free, legal, f- from what I understand, it's legal. I haven't done this, but I heard that it's completely allegedly. legal. Uh, allegedly. It's completely legit, so... Yeah, you should probably do that. <laughs> I, I shall research this further, sir. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Uh, I got one called Private Internet Access. Uh, not saying that I that I used it for that, but, you know, <coughs> I Just could, allegedly, but I, yeah, I'm not going to. Um, yeah, but I should check that show out. Everybody c- keeps telling me to go watch it. It's the greatest show ever. But, yeah. They had like a bunch of people, and it's kind of funny because there's some people that are that are like super troopers about it. Like they had a was it Guy Guy Fieri? Like he he ate the the whole wings. Like when he got towards the end, oh he was yeah, like, he's a he's he's a pro. He's been doing it. <laughs> he was like like he was having he was having a little bit of trouble with the last wing, but then he was like, oh by the way, if you notice, I didn't drink milk or water. <laughs> a little bit of the hair, a little bit of the hair gel was dripping out, but otherwise, you know, he was all right. <laughs> yeah, he's no stranger to Flavor Town. <laughs> There's a Neil deGrasse Tyson one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that one was great. <laughs> Does he break it down? Well, right now what's happening is the uh, flavonoids are... <laughs> Don't ruin this for me, too, <laughs> black space guy. Come on. Well, actually, <laughs> uh, if you if you look at all the things in space, uh, peppers are the least of my concerns. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just star stuff. <laughs> yes. Shut up! You're not Carl Sagan. <laughs> the, the, high, the the Scoville unit is a concentrated uh, amount of stardust. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a great time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of like science man. Or I like how everybody's turning on uh, Bill Nye now. It's so and scientists oh. are turning on Bill Nye now. It's not just like oh the conservatives are. No, the scientists but, are too. Yeah. Did you watch it? Did you watch his? Uh, no. That. Oh my God! I watched it. I watched horrible. those. That, I watched the relevant clips. They were. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. what I meant. Yeah, like the uh, gender song or whatever. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, the whole issue aside, the just the whole performance was horrible. Just, I mean, you know. Oh my yeah. God. I was so, so cringy. I get hurt watching that. There was there was nothing good about it. The music was terrible. The performance was terrible. She was like out of breath the whole time. Like even if. <laughs> Even if it was about like you know, a star stuff like we're all made of star stuff like mm. I, yeah, that you know whatever. But it wasn't. It was about like <laughs> on top of it, it was like oh yeah, I'm into fleshlights on the moonlight. <laughs> Who isn't? No, but uh, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, if I don't advocate it, but if you were gonna blow up a performance, why not? Why not pick <laughs> that one? You know, leave Ariana alone. It was so bad. I, I don't know what they were thinking. What were you thinking? And the, I guess they had one, and someone showed, uh, not show one, but I saw a clip. I found, I stumbled across a, a link uh, to this video where it was, it was, the whole show was about um, like homeopathy and alternative medicines and why they're all crap. And everybody was saying, like, yeah, the show was great. But then at the end, like, they had some guy saying, like, you know, all these people should stop appropriating my culture because they're using like, <laughs> you know, like uh, these Buddhist symbols and these these Indian symbols and, oh, and yeah, statues. And it's He's... like, why do you give a shit what snake oil salesmen <laughs> like decorate their place with? Who gives a shit? They're snake oil right. salesmen. Because <laughs> like, it's our snake oil. Yeah. 
How about you stop telling them what to what to decorate their place with and stop and start telling them like, hey, stop selling snake oil. How about that? I think that's a better you, tactic yeah. to go that's after these good, people. Yeah, strike the root here, man. Yeah, yeah. St- stop swatting the leaves. Like, yeah, I was right. like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I this it seems terrible, like absolutely terrible. And I just, I, I can't even drive myself to watch it from. And I love watching cringe. I do. But I couldn't even want. I couldn't even stomach that. I don't. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's so bad. The cringe level. Everyone's way got too their high. limit. Yeah. Did you watch it? Did you, yeah, I watched I those clips. You know, I'm, oh, not, okay. I'm not gonna. I I don't like Bill Nye, um, for many reasons. But I was more of a uh, Beekman. I, so I was. I was. Yeah. I saw the requisite uh, train wrecks. You know, of which we <laughs> just spoke. So that was enough. More than enough for me. Yeah, I like Beekman more. I mean, like Beekman, he's he's very vocal about his politics, but he's ne- he never does it on his on his show. Like anytime he's on the show, he's he's usually very straightforward. Right. That's, that's why well, I like and that's Beekman. That, that's that whole scientism, you know, where yeah. you start bringing in your belief in science, which is, I mean, I, I nothing against science, but scientism is yeah, a whole scientism, other yeah. thing. Um, where you start bringing in this into the political or, or economic realm and saying these things are, are unquestionable or unassailable or, cons- you know, consensus says that's what, you know, and that's what all those guys are doing is they're not just saying, Hey, this is, you know, what we found, or this is what science says. It's like, okay, well, science says this. So now, you know, we get to plan your life for you. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm like, Whoa, like let's, and, and I do, I do think this is true, and I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback, and I don't care. But I do think the Earth is warming. And I think man has most likely the, the you know, the biggest cause of it. Let, but let, even if that's true or not, it, even like even if you were to say, okay, let's just assume that that's true. That doesn't ex- that doesn't follow that tax, um, ta- like carbon taxes, carbon credits, are, and right? yeah, is going to fix it. It doesn't it doesn't follow. Mm-hmm. Um. And if you look, if you look at it and say, what's the biggest pro? Where is the biggest amount of carbon that's being emitted? It's not from the United States. It's coming China. from China. India. Yeah, who's still insistent on you know using coal because it's so cheap for them to pump that stuff out, and they're not clean coaling or anything, so it's even cheaper. No. So they're just bellowing all that crap out. So even if we were to cut our emissions down to like zero, it wouldn't make a neg- uh, an impact because you know China's so bad. Right. No, I, I definitely think the human factor is a, um, plays a role in it. I don't necessarily think it's probably the largest one. I think, you know, the the uh, sun cycle, the you know, the way it affects the Earth is probably a, a lot a big part of that. Mm. But like you said, yeah, even if it was, even if carbon emissions were the the main contributing factor, um, like you said, what what could you really do about it at this point um, in terms of legislation or or when there's other countries that are, you know, crapping all over it, even yeah. worse than uh, than we are. Where's the science in, in all these policies? Like, yeah, okay, this, let's say that the science is true. Where's the science that proves that your solutions will work? Are, is there? No, they're not really. There's there's no like, I don't I don't think there. <laughs> yeah, well, it, right. Well, it's it's um it's never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. You know, they see this thing and this is an issue, or you know. So they say, okay, well, now here, here's our ch- chance to take advantage of this quote-unquote crisis and implement our, you know, statist or, or a totalitarian or whatever kind of designs for society. You know, if yeah. we just engineer society correctly, the, the uh, guys this issue that. will go away. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and I love the whole zeitgeist movement thing where they're like, you know, we, we just want to we just want to do things according to the scientific method. But it's like, yeah, but you have explicit conclusions that you're going to draw from this stuff. That's anti-science. If you're going to say, like, we're going to use all of this science to come to the conclusion that we need to get rid of money. Eh? No, because <laughs> what you're not you're not you're not gathering data and then coming to the conclusion like, well, we've we've looked at all the data from all the economic stuff and we've done some scientific mm-hmm. tests and it comes to the conclusion that we need you know like a one world government or a one world uh you know system or whatever that allows people to have strategic access to resources you know and we should have commons and and all drive maglev right on maglev trains <laughs> and in, in circle cities like no that's what you're doing is you're doing what the creationists are doing right. and saying like here's what our story is let's find evidence to support it that's and yeah, <laughs> basically a brave new. There was a, a manual called uh, "A Brave New World," I think. Yeah, 
Oh, no way. That's a work so, of fiction. But <laughs> it seems like that's kind of the, the manual they're pulling from. And they fully, like, I know Peter jo- Joseph is the guy who runs the, Ven- not the Venus Project, the, uh, the Zeitgeist Movement. Mm-hmm. He actually said that, like, no, that book was actually supposed, it wasn't supposed to be written as a dystopian <laughs> novel. It was supposed to be. It was a blueprint. Yeah. And he was like, well, well, why not? <laughs> like, what could go wrong? Everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's just add a little central planning. Oh shit! I was yeah. listening to Michael Malice on um, Joe Rogan, and they were talking about this, and they also talked about global warming and stuff. And they pretty much said what we were saying. Um, but I guess Neil deGrasse Tyson had had mentioned, uh, and Joe Rogan was saying like, I think it's really important that we like take this into consideration that you know we have all these people in 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 power, and what are they all? They're all lawyers. It's like, well, where's the engineers? Like, that's what we need. And Michael Malice was like, no, that's exactly what you don't want. <laughs> you don't want all these people because then <laughs> no. once once these, sci- these scientists get into power, then they start looking at humans as like cogs in the machine. And then, you know, then they become disposable. It's like, that was the problem with the USSR. Like most of the Politburo, they were, like yeah. most of them were engineers and scientists. Like that's what they were specifically going after. You did, you, did you not see Prometheus? You know, I, I did not see Prometheus. The, the en- I've heard. Yeah, well, th- th- that's what it's all. It's all about engineering. The you know they engineered the human race and the um, you know xenomorph. And how did that work out for everybody in the Alien <laughs> franchise? Um, but my uh, my father in law, he's from the Tar, but he's an engineer and he's a great guy, super smart. Love him. I wouldn't want him planning society. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, no thanks. Yeah, he sounds a lot like Trump when he gets drunk. <laughs> this is not the kind of person that I want running the country. Uh, does, doesn't everybody? No. I'm going to build a machine to get rid of those immigrants. <laughs> like, uh, all right. All right, just, Grandpa Joe. <laughs> just gotta, <laughs> he's got to. He's got to. Oh, man. Yeah. My never, dad was never, never met a wall he didn't like. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, he was the first president to go to the uh, to the West Wall in um, Jerusalem or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> he loves walls. Why yeah. wouldn't he? You know, why wouldn't he go <laughs> show some love? Yeah, I heard that too. And then Jeremy was like, no, no, no. Like er- almost every president, like you can go that, and look him up. Yeah, yeah. That was a weird thing to me. I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, um, really? And I started googling images of it, and I was like, yep, there's Obama. Yep, there's George W. Yep. Okay, there was Clinton. Or no, yeah, it's Hillary it's, Clinton, but I don't think it's just what you do on the presidential tour. You, you know, you go to the wall and you know you pay your specs, and you go to Saudi Arabia and you, hold you know, bow your head and get your leash and hold the give them ball. hundreds of billions of dollars in weaponry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then touch the glowing orb, orb of Mordor or whatever. You know? <laughs> That's just what you do when you're a pres, man. Yeah. So as, as bad as lawmakers are and as bad as lawyers are, um, it seems a le- little less dangerous than putting you know scientists at the helm. Because we've seen what happens when you put scientists at the helm. High modernist schemes have always been just absolutely disastrous. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, there's a great book about it. If I highly recommend it. It's called um, Seeing Like a State. by um, It's the same guy that wrote um, uh, The Art of Not Being Governed. Um, James oh, yeah. C. Scott, Professor James C. Scott, like I think this is a far better book, and it goes into like, like he'll he'll just he'll even take like these examples like here, like there was a, a plan like for people to start growing trees more effectively by growing them in rows and eliminating the underbrush and and the wildlife, and they were like this is a much more efficient way because then we can just chop straight through and then pick it up with machines and be done. And what ended up happening is all the trees started dying off because it, there wasn't all that wildlife that kept everything in order mm-hmm. because it was like a whole ecosystem that keeps these trees alive. And he was like, right. that's the metaphor for why all these high modernist schemes work when they build the city from bottom up and they design the uh, the e- economy from, you know, or so, sorry, from the, from the top down, you don't, you want it from the bottom up, uh, from the top Absolutely. down and you get the, um, the, the economic system from the top down is that it just doesn't work with how people function. They, they want s- spot and 80 and when spot and 80 is gone, they start going crazy. Like there's a city in Brazil, it's called Brasilia and it's the capital city. They built the city according to their constitution. After they finally had enough money to do it, they built it from the top down 
And they were like, okay, so here's where all the streets are going to be because we know how they're going to travel because here's where they're going to be living and here's all the office buildings and here's all the governmental buildings. And we know that most of these people are going to be going to these particular buildings. So we'll build the traffic's, you know, the, the traffic lanes wider in these areas and small in these areas and we'll make everything, you know, pretty and uniform and everything's going to be like uh, stone gray and um, <laughs> green and lots of lakes, you know, that are really blue and, you know, It'll be very pretty. And then when people saw it, they were like, wow, this is a beautiful city. And they all rushed to move in. And then when they got there, <laughs> they were like, oh, my goodness. Like, they started going crazy because there was no other colors. Everything was just, you know, white, gray, right. blue, and, and green and all this really tranquil colors. But people missed, like, you know, the stores with the crazy signs out front. You know, they missed that stuff. And it, it brought on a condition that, like, psychologists had to go in and investigate and go, yeah, like, this is a condition called brasiliitis. <laughs> <laughs> they, actually, they actually gave it a name after the city because they were like, this, wow. is, this, cause this is the only time they've ever seen anything like this. And I guess there was... Um, Washington DC was the same way for like a hundred years. Um, but people ended up moving out of the city because it was so, they were, it was causing depression to live there. And then they had to commute. And when they commute, it messed up the whole, the whole city, (laughs) like the way they had, (laughs) because they had it all planned. Like, here's how many people are going to be traveling to work. And here's the buildings that are going to be in. So we're going to want the lanes this big. And some people wanted to ride bikes and it just threw everything off. And it was because yeah, the the ants go marching on. Yeah. And it made the city almost uninhabitable. (laughs) It would, it just became like a wasteland. Yeah. It's It's, too bad. It didn't in the long run. No, (laughs) (laughs) You should have planned harder. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe plan harder. Now. They were onto something. Make every make. Let's put these guys in charge of um, every capital, you know. Yeah. Uh, of the, in the world, see how that works for them. Yeah, but how how uh, Washington D.C. got over it was just people ended up like working around it and you know buildings got demolished and they mm-hmm. put up other buildings and all this other stuff and it got to the point spontaneous where, order yeah spontaneous yeah. order kind of creeped right. in and, and made mm-hmm. it much more uh livable but at the end of the day it's still washington dc you know yeah there's just it's one thing that's always amazed me about people who claim and they're usually you know progressives or, or leftists is that they claim to have all these um you know, morals or well, morals you know, or, you know, like I'm, I'm moral because I want, you know, equal rights and all this. But at the same time, it's like the only avenue they ever consider is that top down approach, mm-hmm. you know, which is inherently totalitarian. I mean, we've, you see how it works played out over and over in history and yet they never, they never learned from it. You know, I have, I have a good friend who's well, this you know, time we have 3d printers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> different now. <laughs> It's yeah, it's gonna change everything. Yeah. You you know what I mean? And it's like, well, how does society order itself? You know, he's worried about how society orders itself, and I'm like, well, people do it through you know interaction, voluntary exchange, spontaneous order. You know, the, from the bottom up. Like, I don't get why they claim to be so enlightened or progressive or have all these kind of moral high grounds, but at the same time, they're just advocating for that same old top down. Uh, authoritarian structure that's laid waste to how much um, you know human life and and uh, creativity and ingenuity. Yeah, uh, it's a nice disconnect, I guess. Yep, but I don't know. It's just scientism. It just it just seems right because it's science, right? And the right is so anti-science. But we can't have nuclear energy. GMOs will give you cancer in the butt. Um, what other anti-science things do they believe? <laughs> like, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, astrology. The left loves astrology. Oh man, do they love astrology? But yeah, it's like no, everybody's got everybody's got grigories. Um <laughs> but yeah, and scientism is, is definitely one of them. <laughs> so it's the tip it's the tip of the spear now, I yeah. think, for that for that kind of um mindset. Yep, science is wonderful. It's a wonderful tool. It gives us lots of great things. It's how we're doing our show right now. Absolutely. But to say that my computer should somehow dictate how I live my life or my neighbor's life, eh, hey, whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> I, can barely, I can't even get my Alexa to tell me a good joke. <laughs> yeah. Even over Fix this. that. Yeah. Fix that before you try to plan my life. Okay? 
the day the day the Alexa tells a, an actually funny joke is the day you, you can essentially plan my life. Yeah, <laughs> you heard it. You heard it here first. No, I, I don't know about all that. That's the that's the first step. Now there's many other steps that you have to take. <laughs> if you can't if you can't at least achieve that with all your wonderful science, uh, don't ask it to to plan my life. Just let it entertain me, so I can just be like, no, no, don't tell me another joke. Nope. Just just play the Book of Mormon soundtrack again, okay? Just shut up. And yeah. But yeah. Oh, uh, did, sorry. Did you go see that? Yes. You... By the way, I wanted to bring that up. I listened to your show yesterday, and your co-host you. Drew <laughs> said something that I think is completely unforgivable. He said that the Book of Mormon oh. soundtrack or the Book of Mormon show was good. That's the that's the most offensive thing I've heard in my life. No, I, I can't allow that. I can't allow that. I need to. I need to call him to task. It's not Triggered. good. It's not good. It is the best thing I have ever seen. The best <laughs> thing I have ever seen in my life. And I've seen some pretty cool shit. Like I saw yeah. the Penn Gillette episode where he was going on about it. And I was like, oh, he's, maybe he's being a little bit hyperbolic. Because he was saying that he saw Bob Dylan and he saw, you know, uh, Cream and, you know, like badass shows that I'm like super jealous about. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, but this this was way better than everything. <laughs> like, way better than everything that I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, oh, I don't know about all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, <laughs> and I've seen all kinds of cool shit. Like, I've seen, I've seen Primus live twice. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen a bunch of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've seen Hoobastank get booed while they were, <laughs> when they were a ska band. That was amazing. <laughs> That was absolutely oh, that, amazing. I, I would not, pay money to see that. The not music them, was but bad. To see them get booed. Yeah, right. that was amazing. That was one of the best things that I've seen. But no, the Book of Mormon tops everything that I've seen. Everything. Wow. By far. Yeah, I, right. I understand well, it now. I understand that position. It's the best thing that I've ever seen. And well, to say it, that it's good <laughs> offended me. <laughs> it's not well, good. Well, I, I will chastise him properly yeah. for using the, uh, the the improper superlative. <laughs> Do whatever you can. Get what like, it cost me like seventy eight bucks for for a ticket, and yeah, worth every penny. Worth every penny. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't, I'm. Uh, I've never actually been to a theater production, so I guess I just. I always hear about them, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, that's one of the ones that did interest me because um, I did grow up in a predominantly Mormon area. <gasps> I'm fairly. Oh, Ooh. I thought you grew. I thought you said you grew up in a Mormon household. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, not in a Mormon household, no. <laughs> um, but in a more, you know, more a Mormon enclave for the most part. But um, so you know, I'm I'm familiar with the source material and and the you know the people that adhere to it to some extent. And in yeah. fact, I still live in a pretty Mormon heavy area. But yeah, that's one of the ones I always wanted to see. So I was kind of I'll make it a point to see it. Yeah, and but, I'll make sure to say it's great. Yeah. It's, the best. <laughs> it's the best thing, you'll or ever else you see. may not have me on the show ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was really offensive. I was like super triggered. I got like PTSD from it. Actually, no. Oh, dude. Yeah, I, I can't possibly have gotten PTSD because I didn't see combat. I'm sorry. I yeah, to. they have a monopoly on that. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't you know? Uh yeah, the Book of Mormon, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's it's everything is funny. Like all the jokes are absolutely perfect. It completely like thrashes the entire Mormon religion while at the same time celebrates it. It's a weird kind of combination what they yeah. do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I listened to that uh to the uh I can't I'm gonna butcher it. The Asa Debo Igawai or whatever. Hasadega uh, Ibowai. Yes, thank it means you. Means fuck you I, off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it all. I was, I was held up at the airport. You know, they're all. Yeah, they're so like, well, we've all got AIDS. Yeah. Away. yeah. <laughs> it's like Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. You know. Oh my God. He was like, "Don't say that. It's saying f you to Heavenly Father." <gasps> I said it like thirteen oh. times. <laughs> oh my God. It's great. Uh, yeah. So yeah, check it out. And that was like that was that was. Absolutely hilarious, but there was way funnier. Like I love the spooky Mormon hell dream sequence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't recommend I, that enough. It's the best. Now thing. I feel doubly bad that I missed it. Thanks yeah. for that. It, are they, they've been having tours like crazy because I think I think it was nominated for like fourteen Tony Awards and it won like nine of them. And it was oh, like yeah. yeah, and it was it's Matt and Trey's first like. Musical production, and it also was the guy from was Avenue Q, which also is hmm. amazing. I haven't seen it, but I've seen clips from from Avenue Q. 
Um, I don't think I've ever gotten an opportunity where it's in town. Usually everything's at the Smith Center here. I don't know what that is. Um, I know you. I I guarantee you've heard the song um, where they were like, uh, "The internet is for porn," like that. <laughs> That, that okay, that's it's from that. Yeah, that's that's one of the the, the parts of of that show. Um, so it's kind of like it's almost like Sesame Street, but it's like t- adult. <laughs> from what I understand, I, I, yeah, I, I haven't nice. seen it. But they, yeah, they worked on on that show, and it was <clears throat> it was their first production, and they won like they pretty much cleared house at the Tonys, um, nice. which is kind of amazing. Yeah, and they deserve every award. I, I told my parents to see it, and you know, there's a lot of like really adult content. My mom pretend, she pretends to be a, sh- a, a prude, but my dad caught her liking super bad. <laughs> but <laughs> he always tells me, he, she, he always tells me like she always acts super offended when you guys are around, but then when you guys are gone, she'll love it. <laughs> she loved that yeah, well, over, and yeah, it's so. probably hard to let that. As a parent, it's kind of it might be a little hard to let that parental. Vestige, vestige, or facade fall sometimes. Yeah, know, so, you know, we'll see. Yeah, but I you got to pretend. You got to you got to feign outrage or or uh, clutch the pearls. You know, at, at appropriate <laughs> times when your kids are around. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. Even if you're like, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I did walk away from all this uh, cryptocurrency balloon. Like, I had like f- about 50, 50 bucks worth of Monero that I bought. It was a total of five Monero. Sold mm-hmm. it all off for two seventy. So uh, that's a pretty good haul. I was like, when when I see all those cryptocurrencies, like it was super spiking yesterday, and I was like, mm-hmm. and now's the time to get out. <laughs> I, I know it's up a little <laughs> bit more now, but it's like, don't care. It's not something I knew yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be crashing really soon because they're all kind of really spiking up right now, and it's really unsustainable. Uh, so I cashed out, and so maybe I should make next time they come in town buy a ticket. Now, <laughs> now they have some extra spending money. <laughs> I should go see the Book of That's Mormon good, again. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of interesting or have new Bitcoin Q. going on, and and uh, I don't have any, so I don't uh, really. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I'm like, I, I'm like, oh man, I, I always say I need to get in, you know, I need to. Uh, get bitcoin or at least get a wallet going and i keep just not doing it so yeah i do want to do monero though you know and i, I tried bitcoin when it came out but um I, my my i was doing it on my my laptop and it wasn't really powerful enough to mine so but i'm definitely interested in uh, doing bitcoin or, or monero so i might be buying some when that whole thing evens out yeah the monero is almost impossible to mine forget it <laughs> i really mm-hmm. tried i think i have like 0.02 monero that i mined <clears throat> And it was over a course like a month. I wow! Was like, Screw this. And then Bitcoin came out, and I was like, and Mike was like, uh, "Hey, I, you know, like, why don't you start mining it right now?" Uh, and I was like, "We well, haven't even launched it yet." He's like, "Yeah, we have like a point zero one percent like pre mine." It's like once we get to uh-huh. one point, then it gets launched. And I was like, "Okay, cool." And he was like, and I ended up walking away with like three thousand of them. And then I nice. then I got about two thousand more through various means. And then, yep. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I bet I better sell them out now. <laughs> and I got a good deal on yeah. it. And then I bought Kratom with it, which I think I think that should be like the right thing. If I'm going to buy anything with Bitcoin, it might as well be Kratom. <laughs> oh, Kratom, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, so, close that loop, man. Yeah. You know, full circle there. But yeah, like nobody's donating <laughs> with Bitcoin right now. And it's understandable. Like the, like it costs like 30 oh, bucks sure. to transfer a dollar. <laughs> like, the tra- yeah. The transaction yeah. fees are high, right? Is that yeah. just um, due to the... the um, I don't. I I forget why the transaction fees go high. Yeah, it's the, the block the size, size of the blocks. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, what I when when I had to cash it out, I used um, I used Litecoin because of the transfer fees on that they have they have really small block sizes or really big. I forget what they are, uh, but the block sizes are um, better. So the transaction fees are a lot lower. So I was just like, all right. So what I'll do is I'll just transfer. I use Shapeshift to transfer it to to Litecoin, and then use. Uh, Coinbase to to buy it out, and I was like, okay. And then when it drops back down, then I'll, bu- I'll buy my five Monero again and start all over. Because <laughs> nice. Monero is like one of those kind of coins that has like a steady growth, but even that started like it, it was doing pretty well. Like even compared to like all the other ones, it was just kind of slow and steady. It was still rising, but I was like, I don't know. And then it, like it just checked that it was like fifty two bucks, and I was like, that's not good. Cash out. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me outside. Uh, yeah. Oh God! No more dead memes, please. 
I know. I know. That was so June. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was so <laughs> what? July. Uh, what, when did that fucking thing come out? Why am I saying future Dude, months? I only brought it up because she's going on tour, man, and she has writers in writers? her in her tour. Right? Yeah, right. Like in her uh, on her tour, she has writers. Like she can only have. Uh, I don't even know why I know this. I, I saw this last <laughs> night. She doesn't want. She won't wear. Um, she only wear Hanes. Uh, you know, athletic shirts, aka wife beaters. Uh, she won't wear Fruit of the Loom wife beaters. So. <laughs> to, uh, get it right, people. Why? I, I don't know. I didn't. I just saw the headline. I was like, "That's enough for me." I don't want to know. Yeah, she's crazy. But maybe, yeah, maybe you could use your uh, cash out some Monero for for her tour. No, nah, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm all right with that. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> Speaking of blowing up, uh, no, okay, sorry. Oh, uh, too, si- too soon. Too soon, man. I just had someone like complain to me yesterday that, that some other libertarian was making jokes about the bombing and I was and he was like, It was really tasteless. I'm like, dude, you're telling the wrong person I'm all about tasteless <laughs> jokes, but I think that's a little I don't think I would want to go there. I don't want to deal with the ah fuck it. Make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take I'll take the blowback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm no, all about taste. It's one way jokes. people deal with things, you know. Yeah. Black humor. It's one way to deal with um, kind of things that are really hard to comprehend or or uh, grok, I guess. You know. Yeah. Maybe not saying it's the best way, but it's one way. I, th- I think once once the uh, that Batman shooting when the Dark Knight Rises was released and they had that shooting in Aurora. In the the yeah in the theater. I com I I said on Facebook I was like man everybody's dying to go see that new Batman movie. <laughs> 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 and then, like my friend, like he said, he said that, like, yeah, I just saw it. It slayed me. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll take that over. Some, like, I had some con. I, oh, like people that I know were like, "That's way too soon. It's tasteless." I'm like, "That's why it's great." <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take that any day over. Like, you know. After the Batman thing, we need gun control. Yeah. You know, never mind that the theater actually was in a area of the city that had uh, very strict gun control laws. In fact, I think the, the theater prohibited you bringing a weapon in. Or with the <laughs> bombing in uh, Manchester, you know, well, we need – they don't look at the root causes. You know, yes, that section of, of um, that religion, Islam, is, is very – rabid but what's feeling the growth of it it's largely uh imperialism you know u.s excursions into you know syria and it's iraq great and, and afghanistan oh you know it's, it's, it's rep- the best recruiting tool they yeah. could ever hope for you know yeah. what i mean and in a way it's like what would you do you know if your child or family were killed by a, a predator you know a drone strike you know i'm not i'm not justifying Oh yeah, I'm not anything yeah, that know. they did, but I'm saying that's where that kind of I think that feeds that kind of um, fuel for revenge or or that hatred of of you know American foreign policy. You know, it's so it's that you know it is like the Kingdom that movie, the Kingdom, where it's kind of this perpetual motion machine where you know action reaction and it all keeps feeding itself. Yeah, so, it just snowballs. But I'll take, you know, a little tasteless or, or too soon humor over, you know, clamoring for more and more uh, state intervention or, or, yeah. or tighter clamping down on individual liberties because somebody, uh, you know, did a horrible thing. Yeah. And I, I think it's I think it's kind of effective, too, because you're actually kind of ta- taking a lot of the emotion out of it. And when people are super emotional about something, especially the tragedy that happens. And look, I feel bad for everybody that, you know, that was hurt or whatever in, in Aurora or Manchester or any one of these tragedies, Paris of twice, um, um, 9-11, even a joke. I'll joke yeah. about 9-11 all day, but I think, I think it really needs to, you kind of have to take the piss out of it a little bit. So that pe- way people start stepping back and going, okay, you know, like, th- you know, that, that may, that, that hurt, whatever. But now I can look, you know, now that that pain is kind of a little bit you know, desensitized a little bit. Now I can actually start looking at it from a rational position and say, what can we do now? Like, what what policy should we implement? And not look at it in forms of, oh, we have to do everything that we can to make sure that nothing like this again happens, even if it does mean, you know, fifteen security cameras in you know in my house that the NSA right. watches all the time. Like, you can you can stop terrorism by doing that, but is it worth but. it? Yeah. 
<laughs> What's actually something... paying for security? Exactly. Yeah, I just I just saw an article where um, the uh, recently the the FAA wanted to have you register uh, every drone. Like if you were you know you just bought like yeah. a drone, say you wanted to go as a hobby, or you know if you want to make movies or um, film real estate, that's a big thing right now where you fly the the drone around the house or whatever. Uh, you had to register it with the FAA, you know, and if you didn't, it was a, a massive fine, you know, a pretty big fine and, and potential jail time. Uh, but that got struck down. So I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, oh, it got struck they, down? Nice. Yeah. A court struck it down and said, no, it's it's basically falls under model aircraft, you know, like people flying around uh, the toy helicopters or planes or whatever. But then yesterday I saw an article where the Trump administration wants to essentially have the ability or legality to – uh, destroy or hack any drone wow. like, out there like uh, because and that was and that then the justification for that was well terrorists could pack them with explosives or yada 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 yeah you know yeah you know, the usual fear-mongering kind of um which i'm not saying isn't a potentially uh a tactic or something that you should be aware of see i thought but, that they would go after I th when you were started talking about that i thought you were going to say like Maybe like peeping toms and perverts and people spying on their neighbors or maybe not even. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's an issue, too. Yeah. Like, you know, sneaking. When are you on. allowed to shoot a drone out of the sky? You yeah. Know? Well, um, if it's over your my property. Well, actually, my every, every, my ro yeah. everything's my, my yard. Everything's my properties. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Nice property spook. Um. <laughs> I'll get you my property in a little spook, yeah. too. <laughs> But I, you know, I that kind of so that's the kind of back door they're trying to build into uh, to that. You know, basically they want the legal authority or clearance to go and do that. And uh, what I read, it was in the New York Times, but it was basically uh, the former there newspaper. Be, there would be you would have no recourse. Lord, if you're going to you say no, if you're going to say the New York Times, you have to refer to it immediately after as the former newspaper. <laughs> per Andrew Clavin, go ahead. Yes, the former newspaper. Um, <laughs> it's like one of the jokes. Yeah, it I would, love it would basically give them carte blanche to you know hack or destroy or intercept any drone, and you would essentially have no legal recourse in court. Like you couldn't <laughs> you know go to court and uh, and fight it. So that's what that's what Trump's trying to do right now. Yeah, and as much as everybody hates on Amazon, I still wish that I can because it would cut, make everything cheaper. Like the the Prime Now thing, it's too expensive, so I never use it. Every, right. Everything that's on Prime now is a little bit more expensive, unless I'm seeing it at like competitive prices. I have, I, but I haven't really been seeing that, so I haven't been using Prime now. Uh, I use regular Prime, um, but the Prime now thing, I just haven't gotten around to using it yet because everything. Because I want to get, I'm not going to use that to, you know, to get. I don't know, like a, like my tap or something. You know, I'm not going to buy it to get buy something on there with that. I'm going to buy something like, you know, I need kitty litter and cat food, and, you know, some cans of tuna and some um, some I ramen. need toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's great and all, but or beer. They don't have beer yet. <laughs> but uh, I wish. Yeah, but I would want them to deliver the stuff by drone because they would be even cheaper if they can just transfer it through a drone. But the FAA is not allowing it. They're just like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah. No, I, I, that's funny, man, because I had that exact, almost that exact same discussion with my daughter yesterday. We were driving, and I was saying, what if you could do delivery by drone? You know, because she, she makes this stuff that kids like slime, and she's selling it. Um, like, yeah, what if you could deliver your slime by drone? How, how cool would that be? And that got into how that's precluded or, or forbidden it's verboten by uh, the powers that be the FAA and the government. I'm like, and how much, yeah. How much cheaper would everything be? How much cheaper would it be to send stuff? If um, the postal postal <clears throat> service didn't have a legal monopoly on, on mail delivery for the most part, you know, illegal to sell or it's illegal to deliver mail cheaper than the post office. Yeah. Even and they're losing billions of dollars a year. Well, um, you're you're not delivering slime. You're gifting slime, and then they're they're giving exactly. donations. Right. Wink, wink. Buy her a drone. <laughs> she was like, "I'll make you some you slime get... tomorrow. We'll be at your house at 5:30." <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, "How easy would it be? You just plug in the It'll cost the you five GPS fidget coordinates. spinners, <laughs> right? <laughs> just put it in the box next to it. <laughs> Only the good ones." <laughs> And th those things are crazy, man. Those things are blowing up, and I don't get them, but whatever. I, most people didn't get pogs either, but I, I love the <laughs> hell out of them. 
So yeah, I, I missed the Pogs thing. Yeah, yeah. I was too old. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh. Or You're... just too cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> no they were awesome. Like that's what all the cool kids were doing at my school. I got in on that. Um, nice. I would. I just wish that I saw. I just. I wish that I was like listening to like my nephews and my and my niece when they were you know talking about like oh look you know like this is what all the kids are doing at school because when I listen to that stuff I'm just like eh, whatever. Uh, now I'm wishing like wow those kids are using that at school maybe I should buy a bunch and sell them on eBay <laughs> from yeah, China seriously like what am mm -hmm. I doing that's what I should be doing is listening to my nephews like. All right. Yeah, forget a, forget a lemonade stand. Yes. Yeah. Are the fidget some spinners of those, dead? Uh, fidget spinners online. Yeah. Yeah. What what are they banning at school tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Oh, they like they're they're banning yo-yos. Like, oh, we're back on the yo-yo thing. I'm buying yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> Find that market. Yeah, man. exactly. I'm, yeah, yo-yos were a thing when I was little too. But they had like the professional ones, and they had like these weird little springs and hammers inside of them that made them spin forever and super fast and. Yep. What whatever happened to the hacky sack, man? Kids too good. <laughs> too kids too these days too good for the hacky sack. Hippies ruined them. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think you think with with marijuana becoming more uh, legal, you know, generally that the the hacky sack market would be <laughs> exploding. But uh, here, here's here's, nah. here's why. Here's I guess why. you got. I guess you got Xbox One and PS4 now. So here, well, there, here's why those things are a little bit more popular with stoners. Back in the day when hacky sacks were cool with stoners, we had pot that looked like yard clippings, and you had to smoke like two joints of it to, to feel what you get with like one hit from the stuff that they sell at any the, dispensary today. So, yeah. so you know, like back then, you could smoke a joint and play hacky sack. Now you smoke a joint, and you're like, huh? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? Am what, I melting what into the couch? Yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're like girl melting into the couch <laughs> for the PSAs. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is now. That's why hacky sex will never come back. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw I saw a video last night. It was uh, on on the Facebook Face Beast. Uh, it was a cannibal can or cannibal <laughs> cannabis infused uh, chili dogs. You don't want the cannibal infused chili dogs. That I'd stay away from those. Have you heard uh, of cannabis like, corpse? They had like cannabis butter, and it was uh, what's that? Have you heard of cannabis corpse? <laughs> Speaking of cannabis which. corpse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Hammer. They're a band, and they're awesome. They're no, like a, they're like oh, a, they are. They're a death metal band, and they and all of their albums and all of their songs. The titles of them are all like cannabis corpse songs and album names, but they just it's like a tribute. Yeah. But they, but they but they no no they actually play they have their own songs and the the songs are about pot and everything. But like oh uh, okay yeah like they'll just take the the album name and then make it about pot instead of dead people or whatever. You know? Nice. Instead of like you know three thousand dead corpses, it'll be like three thousand bong hits or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I know there's like a, a bongzilla, yeah, bong ripper. You know. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, what about they, what about the hot dogs? <laughs> so they had this cannabis infused butter, and they you know mm. melted it and put it into the chili and put it on the hot dogs. And I'm like, dude, that's just <laughs> that's wrong. I, I don't, you know, I'm out. If I have a couple of chili dogs, just normal chili dogs, I'm I'm going to be out anyway, you know, yeah. food coma. <laughs> I couldn't imagine, like, if you were infusing it with some kind of high, very high potency, uh, you know, cannabis. So, God bless, God bless the ingenuity, though, you know? <laughs> That'd be funny if someone was, like, spiking it, like, they're at a, at a party and everybody's, like, watching the punch bowl, like, make sure that no one spikes the punch bowl with alcohol. Oh, here. <laughs> Have some cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one, no one suspected kind of the funny. brownies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. It's it's the classic faint, right? Yeah, everybody's dancing. The next thing you know, everybody's like laying on the floor, like, oh, what? This guy's puking what? in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody's naked on the lawn. <laughs> no, that was the acid. <laughs> Yeah, there, yeah, that's true. So that 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 was the that was the uh, that was a lottery ticket. It, <laughs> yeah, the cops are here, and it was only supposed to be an eighth grade sleepover. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> you know, Jesus. Yeah, I'm waiting for those days because it's going to happen. Like this, the spiking of food is going to be the thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yep, I think spiking of food is going to happen. I'm, I'm sure it already <laughs> has happened, but I'm going to wait for it to get popular. It's going to be the You just new invent like a, a, a food tester. 
and uh, you know, sell that. They, see, the market finds a way, man. Yeah. I don't have to get in on that, like a THC little detector. Yeah, te- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Test oh. your test your bake nice sale for. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like like how they have those um, drug testing stations at raves where you give them your MDMA and they scratch a little bit off and they're like, Yeah, exactly. no, this is just meth, dude. Don't take this. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Stay- this is straight up bath salt. <laughs> <laughs> This will turn you into zombie. Don't. <laughs> Don't take this. Yeah. What are you drinking yeah. on? Uh, I have some uh, Torpedo here. Oh. Sierra Nevada Torpedo. That's a good one. It's cheap. It's hoppy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's available everywhere. It'll get you drunk. <laughs> I yell in all my movies. <laughs> uh, the shark ate me. How's it, how's it taste? <laughs> Chip- oh, man. Chappelle is genius. Yeah. I couldn't. I, couldn't I, I get watched the part of his stand up. What's that? I couldn't get through the new ones. It it wasn't bad. It was just kind of like it's just not the that good. the stand up you mean? Or yeah, the, the new stand. I got stuff. through part of it. it. It was pretty funny, but it didn't. Yeah, it was, didn't it was grab funny. me the way the Chappelle show did. I guess. Or even his stand up back in the day was. I it would have True. me in stitches. I did. I did like him calling out. He's like, <laughs> he's like, man, if you. <laughs> He's like, if you get offended, you're gonna have a hard time tonight. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there are some snowflakes in the in the audience. So yeah, we already knew something's up with 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 Caitlin. <laughs> Talk, <laughs> talking shit about OJ. Oh, yeah, love it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, a lot of that stuff, I was just kind of like, yeah, it's just not as good. I'd rather be yeah. listening to like CK or um, even Joe Rogan is beginning a lot better. Like, I have never been a big fan of his stand up. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, like I, I was watching the the Netflix one. I think we were talking about it. Um, yeah, that one that one was great, especially when he was talking about edibles and how paranoid they'll they'll make you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like um, a lot of these stand ups now are just kind of like, hey, let me read to you from my liberal blog, and oh, it's right. terrible that Trump's president. Doesn't it? We should have Bernie. Yeah, I and feel like we should get uh, Steve Miller Miller on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think we no, were talking I, about it in the Patreon only episode. But I gotta listen to that. Yeah. The one you just did? Yep. Yeah. I'm way behind on the on the Patreons. We need to start making more of those, but yeah. But yeah, but like yeah, a lot of them Bill, are like Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. Yeah. He's still he's kinda of like one of the ones that still kinda, you know, stirs shit up for me anyway. Yeah. You know, and hasn't really toned it down too much. But I used to love David Cross. Like David Cross is hilarious. But then he'll he'll right. you'll see him like do a dis- switch where he's like talking about, oh, my immigrant mother talks funny, ha <laughs> ha But anyways, yeah, George Bush is just a shit time. Yeah, it's right. like, oh, man, now we're doing this. This, uh, is, this is not even wow. humor. This is just, yeah, this is just you grandizing. It's, yeah. it's comedic scientism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like trying to shoehorn your, you know. Okay, I got him laughing. Now I can, you know, shoehorn my my uh, you know, my virtue signaling agenda in, into this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just bad. Like, it, like I, I'm all for kind of having like a a political opinion, like because Louis C.K. will have like political opinions that he'll slip in his jokes, but it's not like he's not using it to like push his agenda, like his political yeah. agenda. He'll just be like, man. Conservatives are shitty, <laughs> you know. And he'll just do a bit about, you know, like, not wrong. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's what I liked about Bill Burr. You know, he's like, he obviously doesn't like Trump. I mean, no, who could? But he, you know, when Hillary Cuck. lost or whatever, yeah, could kick. Um, when he, after Hillary lost, he went on TV and he's like, you, she lost. You know, you know why? It was her. You know, what yeah. I mean, like he was, he had the the stones to at least be out there and be like, no, she sucked. You know, yeah. she's horrible. She's a <laughs> She's a gargoyle. I mean, he didn't say that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it was in that vein, you know. So at least he had the the uh, the the stones to get out there and talk shit about her instead of just taking the easy uh, shots at Trump, which yeah. you know are, are very easy, admittedly. Everybody's saying how how you know how terrible <laughs> Trump is, but it's like, yeah, but your candidate lost to that. That's what does that say? <laughs> What, yeah. you, you have to put some blame on her. You can't just say, you know, like yeah. if it was almost anybody else. Except for Bernie, I don't think Bernie would have won. No, I, I don't either. I mean, I think he would have done better than Hillary. I don't. Um, I think really. He, I okay. think he would have tanked because um, I guess the RNC, the, um, 
what was it? There was some the, guy who was like part of the DNC, and mm-hmm. uh, after the election, like he was, he wrote this article about how Bernie people were saying, like, oh, if Bernie was just elected, you know, if Bernie got the nomination, he would have beaten Trump. And look at the polls and stuff. And he was like, yeah, but I have information that you don't. And that information would have came to light had he got the nomination. And that's the um, their research file. What do they? Um, what do they? Yeah. What do they call it? Like uh, um, Op- opposition, opposition research. There we go. Opposition right, op- research. And the opposition what? research they had on him, like she, he was talking about some of the stuff that was in there. He was like, "This is not even all of it," but like he was he he ended up like going to. I think he was with the Sandinitas or something like that. He was there, and there's a oh, video the- of him. Chanting down with the U.S. with the Sandinistas, the Sandinistas, yeah, in, uh, Nicar- Nicaragua, yeah, and it was like, whoa, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that... gonna be a problem. <laughs> there you know, <laughs> the, you know, like there, there was a lot of stuff in there a lot on him where he was doing. He like... could have had Jane Fonda as his running mate. You know? <laughs> <laughs> could have recreated the uh, anti aircraft uh, scene. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, you know, I'll go, go over with... like a Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a THC teared in a punch bowl. Um, <laughs> no, but, but I, you know, that's the whole thing is, yeah, you have people who support Trump, but I think it was more, you know, for people who bothered to vote, it was an anti-Hillary thing. And that's what yeah. I think a lot of these people don't get. Uh, and they're doubling down on it. You know, they're doubling down on the whole from just, you know, people you see on Facebook or on the street to the DNC or, or uh, people in Congress, they think this is their moment, you know, either, either they really know that they are lost, you know, they've lost, they're relegated to more or less uh, obscurity or, you know, or they're really just delusional and think that, you know, something happened and and they were still in the right and they still have a chance. It's kind of weird, man the whole cognitive dissonance going on with the with the left there. Yeah. I don't know, man. Bernie can still win. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just if we get a co- if we get all copies of that tape. Yeah. You know. <laughs> we can get all copies of that tape. Bernie can Are still just, win, yeah. guys. By guys, it's Bernie can still win. <laughs> it's a hit job. It was photoshopped. Yeah, there's there I heard there was a lot of stuff in there like that that was really bad. They said that it was yeah. thicker than Hillary's. Like the opposition research on him was thicker than Hillary's. thicker thicker than Hillary's cankles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, not that thick. <laughs> Hot sauce, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like that's. She could, Hillary. Let's give it, let's have Hillary go on the hot ones. See, you know. Yeah. She carries hot sauce. She let's carries hot sauce like in her purse, sauce. man. She should be able to like, you know, make Guy Fieri look like a you know a low Scoville <laughs> cuck. As I was once called. Did you just call him a low Scoville <laughs> <laughs> That's a show title. <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Low, low Scoville cucks and stand up scientists. Stand, stand, stand up scientism. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, good times. Yeah. I'm not drinking anything right now. I'm, I was actually ready to go to bed. I did drink. Um, what is it? The Pepsi Fire Slurpee. Yeah. Mm, diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. Yeah. Everybody was talking about it. I was like, well, I have to go down there and get caffeine anyway. You're going to make me go try it. Mm. Nah. Here, here, if you really want to know what, what Pepsi Fire tastes like, just get a stick of den- Dentine Fire or you know Big Red or something and chew on it and then drink a Pepsi. That's what it tastes like. It's boring. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, I've done that. I've done that before. And it doesn't need, or maybe like a quarter of a stick of it. Like it's really mild. I was really disappointed. I thought it was gonna burn. You know, that's what I wanted. I was like, oh, pain. I want pain because I'm really into like yeah. super hot hot sauces. Um, but yeah, this was this was rather disappointing. I'm I'm, I'm getting really tired of like these fast food chains that will release a. Oh, this is the ghost pepper burger. You can't handle yeah. it. And then I'll I'll try it and sweating in the commercial. Not uh. even nothing. I'm like, this is this is mm. kind of pathetic, actually. Like, I'm, it's pathetic that you would even call this. 
like maybe it's a, yeah it, it's marketing ghost or, flavored you know. ghost pepper flavored maybe <laughs> there's a ghost of flavor in it yeah <laughs> not quite not quite flavor just the we, ghost of it it's just it's just the flavor of the pepper and we took out all the burn that's what i want with the ghost pepper if i wanted right. anything else i need another pepper. i saw i saw an article the other day somebody uh I would have prepared more if I knew this was going to be a topic Low where he said cucks. he, yeah, <laughs> he grew a pepper that was hot enough to kill you was the, uh, was the headline. I Challenge saw, accepted. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw that. down the gauntlet. I saw that. And I was like, kill me. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I think we, yeah, you should do a podcast and eat the pepper at the beginning and try, <laughs> just try to finish the podcast. I offered uh Baron. I was, I said to him, I think we should do a podcast where we're drinking the beers and doing what we normally do. But right before we record or when we're recording, go like, this is the Lulberts, you know, brought to you by blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then eat the, the one chip challenge and then try to do the show for an hour without. <laughs> <laughs> With no liquid. Well, no, we'd still be, we could still drink, but you know, alcohol, alcoholic beverages or carbonated beverages only make it worse. Makes it worse. Yeah. Right. Because the carbonation kind of stings your tongue on top of it. <laughs> it doesn't do much to wash it down. So um, I uh, one time I actually had a uh, hobbin from Ballast Point, a habanero sculpin. Had that. That's beautiful. It was pretty good, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the, the, there wasn't much of a hot presence because of the, you know, I felt like it got burnt out by the the habanero side of it. But it was still, it was interesting, man. It was good. I know you've heard of the, the chili beer, right? The, that's gross. Um, when yeah, it, when it's, it, it's like a lager. Yeah, when like it first came bottle. out, it was good. Like when it first came out, and it, before it was bought by what was it Coors or not Coors, Corona. Be- before it was it was bought by Corona, it was really Nuff good. Said. It was it was made in some place in Arizona um, by this little this little brewery, or not. It was like a little brew pub thing. All they did was they mm-hmm. brewed beer and and had they had like a bar and a, and a diner in it. <clears throat> it's since closed. Um, and they used to produce that beer. And when I first started, you know, getting into craft beer, I seen it and I, I tried it and I really loved it. And I went back and tried it again. I was like, this just tastes like Corona with the, with the pepper in it. <sighs> it was so disappointing. I w- they yeah, should bring bummer. the original recipe back. Well, if they do, I'll try yeah. it. Mm. It's like Bud Light Lime, you know, I just <laughs> order <laughs> if I want a Bud, you know. I don't want to spend three bucks or whatever. You know, I don't drink Bud Light, but unless you know, if it's if it's at a party or whatever, I'll do it. But I don't go buy it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm not gonna pay more for Bud Light. I just squeeze some lime in there, and it's basically probably a, a better because it's an actual. You know, I'm actually getting some kind of vitamin vitamin C or whatever from it. You know. Yeah, like anytime I do Cinco de Mayo or something like that, and I I feel the need to have a beer with a lime in it, I don't go for Corona because Corona is. Corona is one of the worst beers on the market, bar none. Oh yeah, it's the down. worst. Yeah, I think like they had like some beer expert that was on Conan, and he was like, "What's the worst beer you ever had?" He was like, "Corona." I was like, he didn't even <laughs> think about Full it. Stop. <laughs> he was just like, "Corona, worst beer ever." He's not even not even like Ice House or uh, yeah. you know, Steel <laughs> Steel Reserve. No, nope, Corona. Corona is <laughs> the worst. Schlitz, and it is bad. Or I'll get like Pacifico. But- That's a little bit better. But I, I'll well, just it's, it's, I'll just usually get like Coors or something, and then I just put yeah yeah because Coors out of all the macro lagers, because you know, kind of that's what you want for putting yeah, lime it's, in it's, beer. It's uh, it's Coors or Coors Light. If I'm drinking one of those, usually yeah, what I'll roll with. It's all swill. But yeah, it's it's, it's the glass. It's swill. the clear bottles, man. For Corona, it yeah. just lets in too much UV light, and you know you lose all the it gives it makes know. it skunky. Plus, their commercials are lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> find find your beach oh, c- really that's all that's all you got yeah <laughs> but uh yeah also beer and green bottles is, are also bad true yeah. i think like grolsch is a little bit better because the glass is so thick even though it it's green thick, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't it, it's not as bad but still we're, we're, it needs to be brown or, or completely black like those ceramic ones that what is it um I can't remember the- Rogue, Rogue, yeah. Rogue sometimes Rogue, have yeah. those those ceramic bottles that are completely, or um, Nocturium, Delirium, noc- yeah. Those are ceramic too. I'm f- I'm a fan of cans, man. Mississippi mud. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> I remember. I, I remember buying that. Like, yeah. yeah, man, black and tan, Mississippi mud. <laughs> and then you try it again. Like you're like, I remember this being good. Whoa. Nope. 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 I misremembered all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Andy, well, sure, Andy we should Google. start wrapping this up. It's been an hour. It's Do you want to plug your? Uh, you plug your your blasphemous podcast that says things like. The Book of Mormon is not the best thing you've ever seen. It's just good. Just I'll, good. I'll say some hail Rothbards. Okay, 30 Rothbards <laughs> in 10 minutes there, on the free market. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> donate, donate some, uh, I'll donate some Bitcoin. Okay. Bit, <laughs> bit, <laughs> Bitcoin to uh, the little birds here. Oh, uh, yeah. Zom- <laughs> Check me out at Tidings. Zombies, the Zombies Government and You podcast uh, on iTunes. Android, Stitcher, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Um, yeah, that's about it. Are you about still it, talking man. about rebranding or no? No, nah, I don't know. You know, we'll see. I don't. <sighs> you know, I, I kind of want to get. <laughs> I don't you're, know how you want to get into this. I'm like, Ugh. I'm conflicted, man, just time wise, you know? Yeah. But um, I'm trying to find that proper balance of, of having fun and talking about things that aren't just strict up, straight up, like libertarian dogma and also you know i do i do care about about promoting liberty and 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 uh, individual freedom and all that so i'm trying to find that balance so yeah yeah if i don't do that maybe i'll 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 start another one that i do you know a little more serious stuff on if not we'll just tinker with the formula as is yeah i like i like having balance where i talk about things that are interesting and then you know every once in a while when it's necessary and not forced have just kind of like oh yeah yeah this, like we were talking about with uh, Muslim extremism, you know, it's a great mm-hmm. promoting tool to have that radicalized section, and it's great. It's a great promoting tool to be like, "Hey, look Absolutely. at all, look at what all these Americans are doing." But at the same time, not like, "Let's talk about the nap for ten hours." Let's talk yes. about the NAP because the NAP <laughs> is the only thing that matters in libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what turned me off to libertarian media for like years. <laughs> so, yeah. So not, absolutely. Yeah. Tired of all that. But anyways, yep. Nice having you on again. Hey, thank you, man. Yep. Always a pleasure, sir. Keep Words. doing what you're doing. Roots. I love the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Roots. Roots. Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the BitCot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lone Birds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this can be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat-looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet-to-be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com.